Welcome. This is going to be just a short little ditty about the muscles and nerves of the shoulder and breaking. Okay, very quickly, modifications in the horse for speed. We mentioned with the skeleton reduction in loss of bones to the distal limb, elongation of distal limb bone. Also, we're going to see here that there's a reduction of muscles of adduction and abduction. Okay, you don't think of horses doing that so much. Adductors are still very important because we need to keep the limbs up under the M. We're going to also see a reduction or loss of muscles for pronation and supination. We saw in the skeleton that the radius and ulna are fused, and so the animals cannot do that. There's really not any need for that. So those muscles are mostly lost, and as we mentioned, there is a very small pronator teres in the boba. Okay, this is the medial view of the right limb at the shoulder and brachium predominantly. Let's start out with suprascapular nerve. Remember the suprascapular nerve passes between the supraspinatus muscle and the subscapularis muscle. Passes in over the cranial border of the scapula and then supplies the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus muscles. If you think about the orientation of the scapula, and if you laid it down horizontally, as it would be in a bear or us, if we were on all fours, with that horizontal orientation, then those two muscles are going to then be above the scapula, so they would be suprascapular muscles innervated by the suprascapular nerve. Let's have a look at those muscles. There's the supraspinatus muscle. It's going to insert upon both the lesser and the greater tubercles of the humerus. And it's going to act in extension of the shoulder. The infraspinatus muscle is going to insert upon the greater tubercle. And it's going to do some abduction of the limb, but mostly stabilizing the shoulder joint. We mentioned before how we get a bursitis of that infraspinatus bursa, and the animal will tend to hold their limb out in abduction. Okay, the suprascapular nerve, because it courses around the cranial aspect of the scapula, it can be injured, such as by a harness or a horse plowing into a fence. Okay, we're going to see atrophy of the muscles then if this occurs and a condition that's known as Sweeney. So there you can see that spine of the scapula there, which isn't very prominent unless those muscles are very atrophied. Okay, moving on to the next nerves. Got two very small nerves, the subscapular nerves. Generally there's two trunks, and they're going to innervate the subscapularis muscle. It's basically going to be an antagonist to the infraspinatus muscle in that it adducts the shoulder. It's also going to function with the infraspinatus in stabilizing the shoulder. The next nerve is musculocutaneous nerve. In the image to the left is that of the canine. You remember how it descends along the caudal aspect of the biceps brachii muscle. We're going to see that this nerve in the horse is going to go around the lateral border of the axillary artery, as we see in that image there. And it's going to have a form a loop with the median nerve. So they're going to have kind of a loop around the artery there, the median nerve going to the medial aspect of the artery. And then they're going to course fairly much together over the coracobrachialis muscle there along the biceps brachii. There is a proximal muscular branch of the musculocutaneous that's going to innervate the coracobrachialis muscle as well as the biceps brachii. So here's the biceps brachii. Brachialis muscle is going to get picked up by mostly the distal muscular branch and then the coracobrachialis muscle there. Okay, a little bit more obvious than what we saw in the dog. Okay, remember that the biceps brachii and the brachialis muscles 
attitude primarily. Flex the elbow. And so I like to remember the musculocutaneous. The weightlifters like to show you the muscle under their skin, musculocutaneous, by flexing their elbow. Okay, now with the corticobrachialis, remember in the dog it was an extensor of the elbow. In the large animal, it's going to be a flexor of the elbow. Something else to mention about the biceps brachii, we are looking at a cranial view here, that biceps brachii muscle has both a short and a long tendon. The short tendon is what we see in the dog, but we also have a long tendon which basically blends into the extensor carpi radialis muscle. This is referred to as the Lacertus fibrosis. This will be important when we talk about the stay apparatus. And you see that there's a ridge. I have a dotted line along this ridge here that is actually palpable when the animal is standing. Okay, in this image, I have cut the biceps brachii muscle and reflected it dorsally to expose the bicipital bursa. Okay, remember in the dog, the bursa was not really a bursa, but was continuous with the shoulder joint capsule. Here we do have a distinct bursa. It can be damaged by trauma. If we do get a bursitis of this bursa, we'll see that the animal, as it advances its limb or brings the limb forward, it's going to generally shorten or have incomplete advancement. And then as they walk, there's going to be a pronounced head bob. Basically, the horse will throw its head up to take the weight off that limb as they're walking. Okay. When the animal rests the limb, it's going to be in the semi-flexed position and by forcing extension is going to elicit pain. Okay, let's move on to the axillary nerve. It's going to dip between the subscapularis muscle and the subscapular artery at the level of the shoulder. It's then going to continue laterally between the teres minor and the triceps brachii muscle, terminating, as we saw in the dog, into multiple branches deep into the deltoideus muscle. Okay, we saw that in our shoulder lecturette earlier. Okay, so looking at the muscles that it's innervating, the deltoideus muscle, the teres major, and the teres minor, we have to reflect the deltoideus muscle to see the teres minor. Okay, so all of these muscles act to flex the shoulder. And I like to remember that the axillary nerve innervates them because if you get poked in the axilla, then your reflex may be to flex your shoulder. We're going to see that there's a cutaneous nerve both to the musculocutaneous and to the axillary. We're going to pick up those when we talk about the nerves of the antebrachium. Okay, the very large nerve diving between the heads of the triceps brachii muscle is the radial nerve. After traveling a short distance, it sends off a branch caudal to the ulnar nerve, to the tensor fascia and a brachii. And then courses laterally between the teres major and the long and medial heads of the triceps brachii into the brachialis groove. Okay, so. Radial nerve, as we're going to see, innervates the triceps brachii muscle. We have the lung and the lateral head separated, you can see there, in that lateral view. On the medial side, remember, the we also see the lung head on the medial side, as well as the medial head. We're not going to have an accessory head, as we did in the dog. Okay, and overlying... The triceps on the medial surface is the tensor fascia and a brachii muscle. So all of these muscles are extensors of the elbow. And if you recall, the radial nerve does the extensors of the elbow as well as the extensors of the carpus and the digit. We'll talk about that with the antebrachium. But remember, if you extend your elbow, your carpus, and your digit out, your arm is now radiating from your body. So radial nerve. Okay, finally. You see the ulnar nerve here, the median and the ulnar nerves are going to innervate muscles beyond the elbow, so we will pick those up with the antebrachium. Remember that the radial nerve does not innervate anything beyond the carpus in the horse. Okay, so there's no branches that go beyond the carpus 
as it does in the dog and in the ox. That's all I have. Thanks.